Hello students, this is food production and this is brought to you by Simple Biology. Please subscribe, like and share this video to get more videos. Learning objectives for this lesson are State how modern technology has resulted in increased food production. Describe the negative impacts to an ecosystem of large-scale monocultures of crop plants. Describe the negative impacts to an ecosystem of intensive livestock production. Discuss the social, environmental, and economic implications, providing sufficient food for an increasing human global population. And discuss the problems which contribute to famine, including unequal distribution of food, drought and flooding, increasing population, and poverty. And let's start. This traditional, this traditional farmer using traditional tools. Now, if you compare it to modern technology tools, this farmer is using modern technology tools. You can see clearly that the difference in the crop yield and even like the large space that can be uh, grown using modern technology tools. So agricultural machines use larger areas of land and improve the efficiency using these machines make the farmer produce much more crops and can use more land for growing his crops. Another factor that affect food production or crop yield is chemical fertilizers. Those chemical fertilizers will be added to the soil and then this soil will pro produce much more nutrients for the plants so the plants at the end will give me much more yield. So chemical fertilizers improve the yield. Those chemical fertilizers, they contain nitrogen, they contain potassium and phosphorus and all these three are required for plant growth for making DNA, for making proteins, and for making ATP, which is the energy currency in the cells. Another factor that help, uh, another factor that help here the farmers is insecticides. Now the insecticides, they kill the insects. They kill pests and insects that harm plants. Those insects that colonize on plants and uh, use plants as their source of food. They make the plant sick and of course they will decrease the yield. Now insecticides kill these insects and this improves the quality and the yield as well. Like a cousin of insecticides are herbicides. Herbicides those kill herbs from the names herbicides. So they are sidal to the herbs. Those herbicides they inhibit the reproduction and the growth of weeds. Weeds are the unwanted plants that live beside our plants, beside our crops. They compete for the, with them for food, for nutrients, and for water from the soil. Now, these herbicides are of two uh, are of two types: selective and non-selective. From their name, selective are the ones that kill the weeds, and other plants are unharmed. So it kills only the weeds, leaving our plants unharmed. While the non-selective herbicides, as their name indicates, they are non-selective. They kill everything. They kill the plants, the crops, I mean, and the weeds that are close to them. So technically, we use the selective herbicides. So as a result, herbicides, herbicides reduce plant competition with weeds. If there is reduction in plant competition, means nothing is competing with plants for uh, the food and nutrients from the soil and water as well. So they will grow much better, will produce much more uh, crops. And as you can see here, the modern technology is helping a lot in uh, this process. Now, another factor is selective breeding. Selective breeding. This selective breeding is... Uh, is this selective breeding is uh, used in livestock and in crops. So selective breeding improves the production by livestock. And I'll give you an example. For example, look at this. Look at this cattle. This is Brahman cattle. It has good resistance to heat, but poor beef. And on the other side, I have this cattle. 
That's the English shorthorn cattle. This has good beef, but poor heat resistance. Now, what if we cross these two together? A crossbreeding between these two cattle results in this type of cattle, which is called Santa Gertrude's cattle. This cattle has good heat resistance and good beef. So it has the good things from both cattle. So this is called selective breeding. So we select the cattle that can interbreed in order to produce a cattle which gives us the best characteristics that we want, high quality and high uh, production of meat. Selective breeding also can be done for plants, so we can improve plant crops. So plant species with desired characteristics are chosen to cross-pollinate and reproduce. So as a result, the genes, the genes from these plants uh, are passed on to offspring and we keep repeating the process until we get the highest quality of crops that we want. Now we will talk about monocultures, the advantages of monocultures of crop plants and also the advantages, the disadvantages of monoculture. Monoculture means you growing the same plants over and over and over every year. So growing the same plants is monoculture. And this monoculture practice is widely spread all over the world. And this results in the production of massive production of wheat, massive production of uh, rice, massive production of potato and other plants. But let's look at the advantages and this disadvantages of monocultures. Monocultures have advantages like here, specialized production. Those farmers are specialized in producing, let's say, wheat plants, wheat, wheat seeds. So this is specialized. They keep growing those seeds over and over, which makes them highly knowledgeable about the, the best way or the best practices to grow those plants, which makes it highly efficient because doing the same thing over and over gives you experience and experience with time reduces the cost. So they know the best practices. To, to grow these plants and this reduces the cost. Of course, if you are dealing with one plant, this makes them simpler to manage. And of course, reducing the cost from the first two options, those two will end up in increasing the earnings. On the other side, monoculture has many disadvantages. And the biggest disadvantage is pest problems because those pests, they colonize on the plants and the same plants they are colonized by the same pests over and over and if you are using the pesticides this means those pesticides would, will create resistance in the pests so we will have pest control problems using pesticides will not help with after some time in addition to all of this monoculture means growing the same plants and the same plants requ requires the same uh, nutrients, the same minerals from the soil. After like few years, this will exhaust the soil. This degrades the soil, exhausts, exhausts the soil. Of course, the soil exhaustion will encourage farmers to add more fertilizers, to use more fertilizers. And using more fertilizers will pollute the environment because this will cause eutrophication when these fertilizers leak with the water to the nearby water uh, bodies like rivers and lakes, and this causes eutrophication, and uh, the, which harms the uh, marine or aquatic animals. Uh, one more thing is that degrading the soil results in plants needing more so more water because the the poor soil cannot retain water, cannot hold water properly. So we need to add more water to to use more water uh, in watering plants. On the other hand, I have other disadvantage, which is it encourages overproduction of commodity crops. Commodity crops like grains, wheat, uh, maize, those commodity crops are produced on over large quantities all over the world. And uh, they are because they are made of large uh, on large scale, they are called commodity crops. So this encourages the overproduction, we produce more. Some countries, they, they just like uh, 
destroy the extra uh, produce they have. This decreases biodiversity because using monoculture means growing the same plants over large areas of land. Of course, those uh, very close to each other, they are uh, cross-pollinating with each other. This means no genetic variation. And over time, this decreases the biodiversity because you are using a lot a uh, large land for just growing one crop, one, one, one species of plant. Using pesticides, using pesticides here up, it kills the bees and other pollinators because the pesticides, they are designed to kill pests and pests are insects and bees are insects. So those will be killed by the pesticides. And that's another uh, disadvantage. In addition to that, after like all of these degradation of the soil exhaustion, over some time you will have a risk of harvest loss because growing the same plants uh, in uh, depending on the season that uh, depending on the climate that is suitable for these plants to grow like if you have one drought season for example you will lose all the harvest you don't have any other like uh, type of crops to compensate so there's a risk here of harvest loss these are advantages and disadvantages of monoculture of crop plants now let's move the intensive livestock production. Intensive livestock production, you can see here, like these poor cows. We have thousands or millions, millions of these uh, animals are just like raised in maybe s small places. But again, as it's like the crops monoculture, it has advantages and disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage of livestock production is food security it provides food for us it provides food for us so we don't like we're not afraid of having no food after a certain time and in addition if the livestock is produced in massive amounts this make it affordable for people make it cheap for people so make food affordable and remember these factories provide jobs for people as well and when they provide jobs they have direct contribution to the economy now, the disadvantages, on the other hand, the disadvantages of intensive livestock production, animals are more susceptible to disease because we have low genetic diversity. We, know, we don't have genetic variation. They are inbreeding between each other, so they are more susceptible to diseases. They cannot resist diseases like wild animals. Increased greenhouse gas emissions. Animal wastes contains methane gas. Methane gas is 25 more powerful than carbon dioxide in uh, as a greenhouse gas and this contributes directly to global warming in addition to this these i waste from the animals also pollute the water food on one side you find the table filled with all the desired food you would like to have on your table and on the other side you have this bunch of kids waiting in a queue just like to have some food in their plates this unequal distribution of food 1.3 million pounds of food are wasted every year but some people they claim that this food which is wasted it can be used to make it as food for animals or fertilizers for plants but still too much food is wasted for no reason and there are other other people starving and this is this results in famine in some places and poverty when thing more which is the last thing here is the pollution caused by the food production food miles food miles it just counts how many miles the food travels before it is uh, found on your grocery shelf let's take an example here which is the apple tree the apples in the garden after harvest they are taken they are carried by those trucks to the, your grocery shelf this truck might travel large distances and this vehicle will release a lot of gas or uh, gas emissions which pollute the air and causes uh, with time global warming. So food production also at a cost which is harming the environment, pollution and uh, releasing gases into the atmosphere. Here is an example of the apple traveling by the truck but those apples they can reach your grocery from a different country and they travel by planes they are carried through the aircraft and this these also pollute uh, that's all for food production thank you for watching this video please 
If you like the video, just press the like, subscribe to the channel to get more videos.